Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the Mushroom Lab. So as I was going through my videos, I realized I was missing something. I should have made this video earlier, but I'm going to go ahead and make it now. I'm going to make a video on just basic grain spawn preparation. And uh, now I did do a previous grain spawn video. And in that video, I showed you guys a hack on how you can use these big pickle jars to actually get 13 pounds of grain spawn out of one run with a 23 quart Presto PC. But if you're just starting out growing mushrooms, uh, you don't need to use these big mega jars. Uh, you're probably just gonna wanna use quarts. Uh, quart jars hold about a pound of grain spawn. Uh, they're super easy to manage, easy to shake. They're just a nice size to deal with. We're gonna do quart jars. Um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you uh, what kind of grain I'm using and my hydration technique and how I do everything and why I do it. Okay, so here's our Presto 23 quart, and these are quart jars in here. And you can see if you stack on top, you can actually get 10 jars in there. Um, it's tight. It's actually really tight. Um, you know, you may have to manipulate the jars one way or another, but uh, you can get 10 in there. Uh, I don't need to do 10 this time. I'm just going to do 7. So you can get 7 quarts nicely stacked across the bottom and so that's what we're going to go with this time i'm going to be using uh, plastic lids with our micropose injection port and filter disc setup so this is the wheat i'm using this is blue seal wheat and it's sold at feed stores as chicken feed and it's a 50 pound bag and it costs just a little over 20 dollars right now um, i used to get these for 14 dollars back in the day which i would love to do again but uh, now they're a little over 20 but that's 50 pounds of grain so that's quite a bit now scoop some out here so these are what the grains look like um it's pretty good stuff you know occasionally i'll find a um sunflower seed or a piece of corn or a bean or something in here and i just kind of pick it out but if you don't get every one uh don't worry about it i basically used every kind of grain under the sun and wheat is my favorite probably followed by rye um, there's a lot of different grains you can use and you can make them work but wheat works really well and it's cheap in my area so it's kind of a no-brainer so obviously your grain is going to increase in weight when it hydrates and the amount it increases varies by what type of grain you're using uh, with this wheat i've been using it forever so i know the ratio i got it down pretty good it's basically going to increase 40 percent uh, by weight when I hydrate it. So we want to end up with seven pounds of finished spawn. So I'm going to start out with about five pounds of wheat and we'll get our scale going here. And I'm going to weigh out five pounds. Usually I'll go a little over, maybe by a couple ounces, um, just because you never want to run short. If I have a little extra, I'll usually just throw it outside for the birds. If you have a lot extra, um, if you mess up your measurement, you can actually freeze it and store it for later. So five pounds, two ounces. That should give us exactly what we need by the time it's fully hydrated. So the hydration method I like to use is just a hot water soak, basically, and I'll let it soak overnight. Um, I'll get my my tap water basically as hot as it can get, which is about 135 degrees. And I'll, I'm basically going to fill this up just enough to cover the grain plus an extra few inches. Uh, you want to get some extra water in there because your grain is going to swell as it sits overnight. And what's going to happen as this sits for 12 hours or so, um, it's just going to perfectly hydrate the grain. And uh, you're not going to get any burst kernels. Uh, and you're just going to end up with some, uh, some perfectly hydrated grain in the morning. So there's other techniques you can use to hydrate your grain. Uh, some people use like a simmer or a simmer and soak. Or some people actually just uh, put their grain right in the jar with a pre-measured amount of water. And uh, just go ahead and PC it and allow it to hydrate in the PC. Um, all of those can work. Um, but I just prefer this method. Another benefit of the, uh, the soak method is that these grain kernels are full of little bacterial endospores and bacterial endospores are basically a survival strategy that bacteria uses so these endospores are designed to survive really harsh conditions 
and they basically germinate and create new bacterial colonies when conditions are favorable. So by soaking this overnight, you're going to trick those bacterial endospores into germinating and then they're going to be more easily killed by the PC. All right, we got our nice steaming hot water in there and I'm just going to cover this up and I typically just let it go overnight. Um, probably about 12 hours would be about perfect. So we're just going to check on it in the morning. It is the next morning and you can see our wheat grains are looking nice and swole from the overnight soak. Uh, that's the cool thing about this tech is that uh, if you start with hot water, uh, you'll have perfectly hydrated grains with no simmer necessary. Uh, simmering does work well too. Problem is you have to stir like constantly. Otherwise, uh, your grains towards the bottom of the pan tend to burst on you. And that's not what we want because burst grains definitely lead to a much higher risk of contamination. So next thing we're going to do is i just have a strainer here this is actually one of those like fly covers if you're having picnics outside but i repurposed it as a giant strainer for doing grain spawn and uh yeah so i'm gonna take take my grain here i'm gonna dump it off in the strainer and then what we're gonna do is i just have a um this is just a clear like a shallow clear plastic storage tote here and i have just a clean bath towel in it and I just use these little clips to uh, hold the sides in so the sides don't collapse on you. And uh, so we're going to pour our grain in the strainer and uh, we're going to rinse it real well with some cold water. And then I'm just going to dump it out on this towel and we're going to leave it sit for a while. Um, usually I'll leave it sit for, I'd say at least three hours. Um, sometimes you can go longer, definitely probably up to like eight hours and uh, that'll just allow your grain to kind of dry on the surface it'll still be perfectly hydrated on the inside but uh, you want the surface dry you don't really want to pack your grain into your jars really wet or you'll end up you know after the pc you'll be just have way too much moisture in there so definitely want to let them sit out on a towel for a while to kind of air dry and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ice fishing for three four hours probably and then i'll come back and pack it into the jars so that's my plan At this point too, as I'm rinsing, you know, I'll kind of move the grain around, see if there's any weird stuff in there. I do occasionally find uh, little treasures in here, like beans or corn, mystery, mystery grain. But uh, this stuff right now is looking pretty clean. So, oh, there's something. A piece of like wheat stalk there or something. So if you see anything, just throw it out of there. If you miss something, it's not a big deal. Don't sweat it. Once it's good and rinsed, just... Dump it out on your towel. And I'll just kind of spread it around, get a nice even layer. And uh, usually I'll take these side ends, just kind of tuck them in, cover it up. And uh, you can come back and like I said, three, four, five hours, and your grain will be perfect, ready to pack in jars. Uh, you can speed this process up if you have like a fan blowing on it, uh, but the goal here is just to uh, kind of air dry that surface of your grain so it's not too wet when you put it in your jars. We are back, and our grain is ready to be packed in our quart jars. I'm gonna show you guys a close up here. You can see those kernels are nice and hydrated and plump still but the surface has had a chance to air dry. They don't look really wet. So that's an important point to remember. Uh, wetter is better with uh, some things in life, but mushroom cultivation is not one of them. We're looking for hydrated, not wet, uh, when we're dealing with any kind of mushroom substrates because too wet, just gonna burn you every time. But we are ready to pack our seven quart jars. Um, we're gonna be using our PP5, plastic canning jar lids with our Micropose filter disc injection port setup. Uh, this is what I'm going to use on all seven jars. 
And if you want more information on what kind of lids to use, uh, I have a couple videos on those and I just made one that talks all about different models of plastic canning jar lids and which ones I recommend and where to get them and all that. So I'm going to uh, load our jars up and what I usually use is just a plastic cup like this. Just scoop it up and dump it in and uh, that's it pretty simple we're gonna uh, fill our seven jars up and get them capped off put a foil lid on each one and then they're gonna go in the PC this is about how full I typically fill my grain jars whether I'm doing pints or quarts or even those big boy pickle jars uh, usually about up to where it starts to taper you do want to definitely leave yourself room uh, so you have the ability to shake these in case you want to shake to uh, redistribute moisture or uh, speed up colonization. Our grain jars are all set, ready to go in the PC. Um, I did have a little bit of grain left over, over there, not much. Uh, so they're looking good. I'm just going to uh, cover each one with a foil lid. Uh, these are foil lids. I reuse these. Uh, so each one's just going to get a, a cap for their bath in the pressure cooker. And with this style lid... Uh, once they come out of the pressure cooker, the foil lid comes off and it never goes back on. So just for the pressure cooker session. And before we put them in there, uh, I have my two quarts of water here. And as always, don't overload your PC with water. This two quarts is going to do just fine for a 90 minute run. We have the Presto locked and loaded on our Wearing Pro 1300 watt side burner. And uh, I got to plug it in still, but we're going to crank it all the way up to five and just let it run. Now, in my last grain spawn video, I had people commenting saying, did you not read the directions? You need to leave the rocker off for 10 minutes. Let steam come out for 10 minutes after you turn the heat on before you place the rocker. I know it says that in the directions. Um, basically what that does is it allows all the air to clear out of the chamber and uh, so the chamber is basically you're sure the chamber is full of steam when it pressurizes you start the pressurization process okay I get that this time I'm gonna do it hopefully that will make everybody happy um, the point I was trying to get across is when you run thousands of pounds of spawn through these things like I have eventually you're gonna forget to do that and you're just gonna throw the rocker on kick the heat on and let it go and i've done that a bunch of times and it still turns out fine i still get good sterilization um i still i don't get any contamination but again i'm not canning salmon here uh, i'm not giving any advice related to food preparation i'm just making mushroom spawn and i'm telling you if you forget to do it with this pc it's going to come out fine so don't worry about it but this time in honor of all those who commented and told me to read the directions, I'm going to leave the rocker off and I'm going to let steam come out, escape from the, uh, from the valve here for about 10 minutes. Then we'll place the rocker, start the pressurization process. Uh, we're going to get it up to 15 PSI and at that point we'll start the timer and we're going to run it for 90 minutes at 15 PSI. It is the next day and our PC and our grain are all cooled down and ready for inoculation. I have the table set up here with the flow hood running and we're going to be doing some liquid culture. <clears throat> That's how I start all my spawn and we have the oyster bar set up here. These are all from Gary from Fresh From The Farm Fungi and uh, if you guys haven't checked him out, uh, he has a YouTube channel, he does some really cool stuff uh, so check him out and so far I love his cultures. And he actually sent me one for free. The one on top there is a Michigan oyster, which I'm excited to grow. So we got the Michigan oyster on top, and then we have his uh, black pearl king, and then we have a true king, or a Pleurotus syringae. And uh, so we're gonna be shooting our jars up with liquid culture. Uh, typically I put about four or five cc's in each jar, and these are 20 cc syringes. If you have some left over in your syringe, just uh, stick them in a Ziploc bag and refrigerate them and they'll last for a while. Uh, so we're going to be moving our jars out in front of the flow hood here. Now I also want to say a couple things here. 
Uh, you do not need a flow hood to do this method. Uh, you can just do it in a really clean room. I know people that do it in clean rooms and they have really high success rates. That's a cool thing about liquid culture. You don't have to actually open the jars up to inoculate them. You're just shooting right through an injection port. If you start cracking lids in an open room and dropping agar wedges in there, odds are you're gonna get contamination or at least really high rates of contamination. So I will tell you in your mushroom growing adventures, you are gonna run into liquid culture haters. I've been doing liquid culture for 20 years with ridiculously high success rates. Um, you're gonna but you're gonna run into people that are gonna say, oh, you shouldn't do liquid culture. It's really prone to contamination. It doesn't work good. Liquid culture is only really prone to contamination if you suck at it. So if you follow the methods I show you, it'll work great, I promise you. Even the large scale commercial growers are starting to switch over to liquid culture for starting their grain. I'm gonna crack my pressure cooker and we're gonna move our jars in front of the flow hood. And as I do that, I'm gonna pull the foil lids off because uh, the foil lids are no longer needed at this point. And we're gonna shoot them up with LC and put them in a storage tote for incubation. I don't incubate my jars in open air. I never do that. I always incubate them in a closed uh, storage tote that just controls the air movement around them and there's much less risk of uh, contamination if you keep them in a storage tote. So as always, I'm going to move the camera back and you guys can watch me work in front of the flow hood. And as always guys, everything on the table has been sanitized with 70% isopropyl prior to uh, inoculation. Okay, I'm gonna start my inoculations, but uh, one thing I forgot to mention too, you might have noticed in the video there, as I pull the jars out of the PC, you definitely wanna snug that lid back down. Sometimes they're tight, but commonly they will loosen just a little bit in the PC. So as soon as I lift them up, I'm checking that lid for tightness, snugging it back down, and then removing the foil lid and in front of the flow hood. Alright, that's it guys. Everything's knocked up. Uh, it took me about 10 minutes. Do seven jars, not too bad. So just make sure you're diligent with your labeling. I always keep a sharpie on the table and label your jars, syringes, whatever as you go uh, so you don't get confused as you're working. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the jars a little shake. So when you PC Typically you'll have some uneven moisture distribution. It'll be a little wetter at the bottom a lot of times. Plus I just squirted about five cc's of LC into each jar, which is also gonna settle to the bottom. 
So I'm just going to give them a light shake and that will redistribute the moisture and uh, mix that LC around. Uh, that's just the way I like to do it. Um, you don't have to do that, but it seems to work better for me. I'm just using a basic propane torch to uh, sterilize my needle with a trigger on it. Uh, a lot of people like to use an alcohol burner. There's a lot of different options. Uh, this is just what I've always used. Gets hot real quick. Uh, but just be careful, obviously you're working with uh, rubbing alcohol, which is highly flammable and flame. So caution advised. Basically I'm, I'm flaming the needle before I inject through the injection port getting it nice and glowing red hot and I have a paper towel that's completely soaked with isopropyl so after I flame the needle uh, I kind of hold that isopropyl soaked towel over it briefly just to cool it and wipe the soot off and then I go ahead and inject the jar. Um, technically you're taking the needle from sterilized to sanitized by doing that with the paper towel but uh, all I can tell you is that's the way I like to do it and it always works. So as always do what you're comfortable with, but uh, typically I do, uh, I'll do two jars and then I'll re-flame the needle every, every couple jars. So if you're doing a run of like six jars in front of the flow hood, you know, flame it, cool it, inject a couple, flame it again, so on, so on, so on. Um, if you have any other questions about that procedure, just hit me up in comments or I do go through it in more detail in some of my other videos like my liquid culture videos. So our jars are now in the storage tote. Uh, this is the kind of container I like to use. Uh, there's holes drilled in it that are stuffed with balls of polyfill. And I am going to put the lid on. Uh, the polyfill will allow a little air in and out. Um, one, one thing you got to watch out for is these little filter discs on top of your jar lids. You want those nice and dry when you put them in your totes. Um, they will dry out a little in here as well with the air exchange, but I do typically leave my jars sit in front of the flow hood for just a little bit, or you can just let them air dry. But uh, you don't want your synthetic filter discs on top staying wet for a prolonged period of time because those can actually grow mold right on the disc and that mold will punch right through your jar and ruin your grow. So we are all set here, and now it's the fun part. Just get to watch them grow. A quick note on light intensity and colonization as well. Typically when I have jars incubating, whether it be LC or grain, I'll cover the tub with uh, just a bath towel, just to shade them a little bit. Um, a little bit of indirect light does not hurt the mycelium at all. You just don't want any um, like direct incandescent light or direct sunlight or anything like that because that will actually hurt them or slow their growth but just a little ambient light is not a big deal so i just covered them with a towel and they'll do fine it's been about a week since we inoculated these jars and i just pulled them out of the container i had them in and i got them in front of the flow hood with the flow hood running and that's because i'm going to do a shake on them uh, we got some nice colonization going on here um, you can see the camera's picking that up. We got some nice linear oyster mycelium growing there, but uh, it's spotty. You know, it's here and there. The whole, let's say the jars are anywhere from a quarter to maybe half colonized at this point. So I'm just going to give them a uh, shake and redistribute everything in there, and that's going to speed up our colonization. I typically do one shake at about this stage here anywhere from a quarter to a half colonized and that's usually enough especially with an aggressive species like oyster and i did uh, just check the lids for tightness when i pulled them out of the tub and i gave the jars a little wipe down with some uh, rubbing alcohol obviously you have to be really careful if you're labeling the jars like i do i just use sharpie to uh, black sharpie to label the jars so when you're wiping them down with rubbing alcohol you gotta be careful that you're not wiping your labels off as well if you guys don't have a flow hood 
and you are using plastic lids um, you do have to be careful because plastic lids are great um, they're easy to use but uh, they do not seal as well as a metal lid does unless you're using a plastic lid that has like a silicone gasket um, these do not so I'm gonna go ahead and just shake them anyway because I have the flow hood um, but if you don't there's a couple different things you can do you can get some uh, parafilm like they use for sealing petri dishes and you can just seal this lower cap edge and that'll get you a nice seal like that and uh, then you could probably shake in open air. I do have a video specifically on different types of uh, plastic jar lids used for mushroom cultivation so check that out but uh, I'm just gonna let uh, let the camera run here and you can see how I shake these up. I'm not gonna get real aggressive with them you're just looking for a light shake kind of mix everything up and then they're gonna go back into the tub and uh, probably within another week or two we'll have fully colonized jars. This is going to be the last installment in this video guys, but I didn't want to call it a done deal until I had some fully colonized jars to show you. So these uh, Black Pearl Kings, BPK, finished up first and they are looking beautiful. And some beautiful linear oyster mycelium in there. Uh, the Michigan oysters are far behind and the Kings are a little bit behind that. But they all should be ready. In a couple days, I'm going to spawn them to some pasteurized fuel pellets and uh, get some grows going. So I'm looking forward to that. I also wanted to mention, uh, this is the stage you want them at, basically, when you want to spawn them to substrate. You really don't want to let them go until they're like a solid block of mycelium. Because at that point, they'll be really hard to shake up and break up and distribute into your substrate. Especially with uh, species with really tenacious mycelium like some oyster, reishi, turkey tail, species like that. So basically when you get them to this stage, they're ready to be spawned out. And uh, just let me know uh, in comments if you guys have any other questions. Or uh, feel free to uh, comment, make suggestions, tell me how you do your grain. And I always love to hear that stuff. So we'll catch you next video.